But it turns out that until recently, scientists didn't pay much attention to dogs. Dolphins have been studied for decades, apes and chimps as well. But dogs, with whom we share our lives, were never thought to be worthy of serious study. As a result, we know very little about what actually goes on inside dogs' brains. Do they really love us, or are dogs just licking us so they can get fed? How much of our language can they understand? Before you answer, we want you to meet Chaser, who's been called the smartest dog in the world. Yeah, we're going to Walford. Hoop. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. 86-year-old retired psychology professor John Pilly and his border collie Chaser are inseparable. We're almost there. We're almost there. Can you speak? Speak. Speak. Oh! Good girl. Good girl. Do you view Chaser as a family pet, as a friend? How do you see Chaser? She's our child. She's, she's your child. child. She's our child, a member of the family. Yeah, oh yes. She comes first. Many people think of their dogs as children, but John Pilly has been teaching her like a child as well. By signing names to toys, okay, Chase. Pilly has been helping Chaser learn words and simple sentences. Take KG. He's been teaching her up to five hours a day, five days a week for the past nine years. My best metaphor is this is a two-year-old toddler. That's how you think about your dog, a two-year-old toddler. Yeah, she has the capabilities of a two-year-old. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Where's chicken? He's not kidding. Yes, good girl. Most two-year-old toddlers in tub. know about 300 words. Figure eight, figure eight. Good girl, that's figure eight. Chaser's vocabulary good girl. Good girl. is good girl. three times that. To tub. She's learned the names of more than a thousand yeah. toys. And all of those Wheel. toys Wheel. add up. Wheel, yes, bring it out. To show us Chaser's collection, Pilly brought us to his back porch. So these are all the toys in here? Yes. You got a <laughs> chicken in here. Okay. Is it right if I dump them out? Please do, please yeah. do. Okay. There are 800 cloth animals. 116 different balls and more than 100 plastic toys. 1,022 toys in all, each with a unique name. So Chaser could recognize the names of every one of these toys. That's true, that's true. To prove it, Pilly cataloged the toys and then over the course of three years gave Chaser hundreds of tests like this. Chaser, find circle, find circle. In every test, Chaser correctly identified 95% or more of the toys. Find circle, Chase. Yeah. The results were published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, and a star was born. How are you? I'm so glad to see you. Chaser even landed a book deal. You too. But John Pilly didn't stop with the names of toys. Nose KG. Nose KG. Knows it. Knows it. Good girl. He's taught Chaser that nouns and verbs have different meanings. Point, point, point. And can be combined yeah. in a variety of ways. Take wheel. Do it, go, do it. Okay, out, out. Chase, take KG. Do it, good, good girl, good girl. So she's actually understanding the difference between take, paw, putting her paw on something, and putting her nose on something. Right, and that's what we're demonstrating. All this learning has been possible, Pilly says, because of a breakthrough Chaser had when she was just a puppy. At a certain point, she realized that objects have names. Right, it was an insight that came to her. How could you tell that she'd suddenly had that insight? Well, it was in the fifth month, and she'd learned about 40 names, and the time necessary to work with her kept getting shorter and shorter. She was starting to learn words faster and faster? Yes. It's the closest thing in animals we've seen to being like what young children do as they're learning words. Brian Hare, an evolutionary anthropologist at Duke University, believes Chaser is the most important dog in the history of modern scientific research. This is very serious science. We're not talking about stupid pet tricks where people have spent, you know, hours trying to just, you know, train a dog to do the same thing over and over. What's neat about what Chaser's doing is Chaser is learning tons, literally thousands of new things by using the same ability that kids use when they learn lots of words. He's talking about what researchers call social inference, a capability humans, like Hare's son Luke, acquire around age one. To demonstrate the concept, Hare hides a ball under one of these two cups. Hey, looky guy, where is it? Can you get it? Can you get the ball? Luke doesn't know which cup the ball is under. Can you get it? But when his father points, he makes an inference. 
Hey, hey, nice job. You got it. So what does that show you? So when kids his age start understanding pointing, it's right when um, the foundations of what lead to language and culture start to develop. Hey, it might look simple, but when Hare tried the same test with bonobos, great apes he studied for more than a decade, look what happened. Bonobos, our closest genetic relatives, can't do it. You chose the wrong one. But Hare discovered dogs can. You ready? All right, I'm gonna hide in one of these two places. This two-year-old Labrador named Sisu has no trouble understanding the meaning of pointing. Now she doesn't know for sure which place you put That's it. right. There's no way she could know, and I'm just gonna tell her where it is. Okay, Sisu. So that's really hard for a lot of animals, and uh -huh. that's what's really special about dogs is they're really similar to even human toddlers. That's a level of thinking that people didn't really think dogs could do. Right. I mean, there was no evidence until the last decade that dogs were capable of inferential reasoning. Absolutely not. So that's what's new. That's what's shocking is that of all the species, it's dogs that are showing a couple of abilities that are really important uh, that allow humans to develop culture and language. It's not surprising that dogs share characteristics with humans. After all, we've evolved alongside each other for more than 15,000 years. There are now some 80 million dogs in this country, more dogs than children. But for all the playing and petting, the companionship, we still know very little about their brains. Dr. Greg Burns, a physician and neuroscientist at Emory University, has studied the human brain for more than two decades. But three years ago, questions he had about his own dog inspired him to start looking at the canine brain. It started out with the desire to know, really, what does my dog think of me? I love my dog, but do they reciprocate in any way? When they hear you come home, you know, they start jumping around. Is it just because they expect you to feed them? Is this just a scam by the dogs? <laughs> Are dogs just big scammers? Yeah. To try and answer that question, okay. Dr. Burns yeah, is doing something kind of scientists have had a difficult time with. He's conducting brain scans on dogs while they're awake and unsedated. Inside the fMRI machine, they're trained to stay completely still. How hard is it to get a dog to do this? This represents probably about three to four months of training, uh -huh. and so most of the dogs take that long. What's around Tigger's head here? The scanner makes a lot of noise, quite loud, and because dogs' hearing is more sensitive than ours, we have to protect their hearing just like ours. So we, we put earplugs and earmuffs and just wrap it all to just keep it in place. Okay, now we go up. Tigger certainly knows the drill. That's good. That's Once good. in the machine, he lies down and doesn't move. These scans are giving Dr. Burns the first glimpse at how a dog's brain actually works. So these are slices of, of Tigger's brain that you're seeing? Yeah, exactly. So we're slicing from top to bottom. We analyze them later to see which parts increase in response to the different signals. Mm -hmm. While in the scanner, the dogs smell cotton swabs with different scents. First, the underarm sweat of a complete stranger. Next, the sweat of their owner. As Dr. Burns expected, when the dogs sniff the swabs, the part of their brain associated with smell, an area right behind the nose, activated. It didn't matter what the scent was. But it was when the dogs got a whiff of their owner's sweat that another area of the brain was stimulated, the caudate nucleus, or reward center. Dr. Burns believes that means the dog is experiencing more than the good feeling that comes with a meal. It shows the dog is recognizing somebody extremely important to them, it's the same area in a human brain that activates when we listen to a favorite song or anticipate being with someone we love. So just by smelling the sweat of their owner, it triggers something in a much stronger way than it does with a stranger. Right, which means that it's a positive feeling, a positive association. And, and that's something you can prove through MRIs. It's not just, I mean, previously people would say, well, yeah, obviously my dog loves me. I see its tail wagging and it seems really happy when it sees me. Right. Now we're using the brain as, as kind of the test to say, okay, when we see activity in, in these reward centers, that means the dog is experiencing something that it likes or it, it wants and it's a good feeling.